Which shoe is better to hoop in? The Adidas Don Issue 3 or the Nike PG5? Today we're putting Donovan Mitchell and Paul George's most recent signature shoe lines head to head to see how they compare. But really quick, if this is your first time checking us out, feel free to drop a follow or subscribe wherever you're watching and give this video a like. We would greatly appreciate that. So starting off with the box and the price, the Don 3s get a spider logo in the middle since his nickname is Spider Mitchell. And then for the PG5s, they're going to come in a gray box with a camo design. It's also going to show up on a small patch on the shoes. And as for pricing, the Don 3s retail for $110, making these a cheaper option as far as like a signature line. Line. And the PG5s are actually going to be right there with them at $100 for retail or $110, sorry, for retail as well. So two of the more affordable shoe models here, which is definitely going to be nice. So checking out the appearance for these shoes and starting off with the colorways, today we have the Adidas Don Issue 3 Louisville Cardinals versus the Nike PG5 Wolf Gray. So looking at the Don 3s first, this is the college edition for his shoe. Donovan of course attended Louisville before being drafted to the Utah Jazz, but it's really not a bad look for this shoe's model. They definitely did switch some things up. You're going to have more of like a crown design running up the midsole, which honestly looks pretty nice. And they did replace the Adidas logo on the tongue from last year's Don 2, and now they have a spider logo there. I honestly think that looks a lot better. And then you're going to have some like Louisville branding on the band that kind of covers the laces on this shoe. And you know, different colorways have different markings kind of show up there. And they took the wavy heel design away from the Don 2s, and now they just kind of have a patch back there. You know, honestly, I kind of preferred the setup around the heel from last year's Don 2 more than this 3, but you know, still not a bad look on this model. But now switching it over and taking a look at the PG5s, the clear difference between this model and the PG4s would be Nike taking away the zipper that ran up the middle of that shoe. You know, honestly, I really did like that zipper because without it, these are going to get more of a simple look. But in between those white overlays on this model, you're going to see in that gray area that kind of features that same camo design from the box, like I mentioned. And honestly, I do like the Nike piece to kind of work worked into the midsole on the shoe. It is going to be a pretty basic look overall though for the design on the PG5s. So now let's see how both of these shoes hold up on the court. For the materials and the support, you're going to get mostly textiles covering the Don Issue 3 with some TPU overlays in a few different places. In the upper, it does have some holes built in kind of allowing your foot to breathe, which is nice. Just overall, that's going to help keep this shoe on the lighter side. And the support is not a bad aspect for these either. You're going to have that crown logo built into the midsole. It is going to play a role in keeping your foot within the shoe so it doesn't slide out. So I mean, the lateral containment is solid on these. And the upper doesn't really move on your step backs and cuts. I will say the support probably isn't quite as good as the twos though. I mean, you did have a more noticeable heel counter to kind of help keep your foot stable. And the upper materials, they were a little more firm, just a little more durable it felt like. But you know, along with that, I just don't think that shoe was as comfortable. So I guess something had to give. Support's a little better last year. Comfort's a little bit better on this model. But you know, I also guess some people have been saying like, you know, the Don 3, it kind of gives you some heel slippage. I just haven't really had that problem yet. So I mean, there's nothing really to go off of me for that section. The support's been pretty decent, you know, just overall. But now looking at the PG5s, this is going to be a cheaper model, you know, just like the Don 3. So you're not going to get any of those premium touches like suede or leather on these. And you're going to get some cheaper textiles that do help keep the shoe, you know, really light. But the support is still going to be solid on this design. You're going to see a few white patches kind of on top of that midsole. They run up the shoe and that's going to help with your side to side coverage. And you're also going to get a small outrigger on this model. And that just helps brace your foot and also gives you a little more of a wider base to help with your balance. And all while doing that, like I was saying, the PG5 is going to remain super light a size 10 and a half only weighs 370 grams and you know the don threes are also going to fall on the lighter side of the scale weighing 408 grams for the same size so i did love that i mean lighter shoes they still don't have the lighter shoes that still don't have major support flaws are definitely nice to play in and we do have two of those models right here so now zeroing in on more of the performance side i'll start off with the cushioning first so the Don Issue 3 comes with a light strike setup for cushioning, and I think that is an improvement compared to the balance that was used in the Don 2. I mean, this year's model does play a little bit softer, so I did like that. And it's going to be pretty balanced from the front to the back of the shoe. Now, I wouldn't say it's going to be anything too special, but it's still not lacking for this section. I mean, the impact protection does feel pretty nice. But now looking at the PG5s, I mean, cushioning is definitely one of the highlights for this model. They use a full-length air dot strobe that feels like you're walking on a cloud. Nike even goes as far as to put that in their bio for this shoe. And, you know, similar to some previous Kobe models, these are going to have a memory foam midsole that conforms to your foot over time. And because of that, they're pretty much going to require zero break-in time. They're going to be soft from the jump and just handle your impact protection and any type of landing really well so i mean neither of these shoes are going to perform bad as far as the cushioning goes but the pg5s do feel better overall from what i've noticed 
To finish off with traction, the Don 3s have a similar look to last year's model, just as far as the pattern goes, and they aren't bad, but I still wouldn't say that they're going to be great either. I mean, they do have a little bit of grip on the floor, but still nothing too over the top, and these have sort of played inconsistent for me, so I'm not really sold on the design as a whole, but the rubber is pretty durable, so I mean, from what I've noticed, it wouldn't be a bad option to use outdoors if you want to do that. But now looking at the PG5s, that's yet another strong area for this model. The traction pattern on these is meant to resemble the human foot, so it's actually going to be the same setup as that Kobe 9. And, you know, just like the cushioning and the insole was going to be similar to the Kobe's line as well. So Nike did pull a few things from Kobe and use them on this design. So that's always going to be a major plus. That is a positive thing. But I just think these give you a much more consistent playing feel on the PG5s. I mean, there's really good grip on any type of movement from what I've noticed. And at first, I thought the cushioning was going to be the selling point for this model. But you could easily argue that the traction is right there with it. But to finish off with sizing, I did go true to size on both of these models. And, you know, they fit about perfect all the way around. Both are going to be regularly long long and regular as wide. So for the final ratings and starting off with the appearance, I honestly like the look of both shoes about the same. The PGs are a little more simple though, and I do like the crown design on the Don 3s. So I'm gonna start off going with Don's line. For cushioning, while the Don 3s did get a little bit better from last year, they still aren't at the level of the PG5. So, you know, PG will take that section. As far as the materials, both of these shoes are gonna get some cheaper textiles to help keep these shoes light. There's no really additional pieces added to either model. So I'm just gonna go with the tie here. And I'm actually gonna stick with the tie for the support. The PGs are gonna get those like molded pieces kind of along the uh, along the midsole, I guess, along with the outrigger. The Don 3s are gonna give you good lateral support thanks to a few different pieces on there. So no clear way to lean, we'll stay with the tie for that section. But as for the traction, the PG5s are gonna win that section. Don's line does play a little bit more inconsistent. The last few models kind of have for him, so hopefully that gets a, you know cleaned up a little bit. But that is gonna lead to me going with the PG5 as the better shoe to hoop in. I mean, this is one of my favorite shoes to play in right now because the traction and the cushioning are going to be top tier. And, you know, they're super light. The support's going to be above average and the retail price is only $110. So, I mean, really, you can't beat it at that price. The Don 3 is going to be better or I guess about the same in some ways, but it's also going to be worse in some others. It's better than the 2s in my opinion, though, but, you know, still going to be a nice performing shoe. Thank you guys for taking some time to watch. If you want to buy the Nike PG5, just click the link on screen or we have links below for both shoes down below or in our bio. So feel free to check those out. But until next review, I'm Landon from Shoeware. Peace.